What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and today I'm extremely excited because I'm finally launching my kitchen in Revit interior design course. So interior design when it comes to kitchens in Revit it's really complicated and it's really advanced because well your kitchens are only going to be as good as the families that you use for those kitchens. So uh, that's why I decided to share with you my personal approach, my personal workflow when it comes to creating Revit kitchens. Uh, and the idea behind this is that I want to show you what is the quickest and easiest, most efficient, most time efficient way of creating uh, kitchens in Revit and also creating them in such a way that they are very good when it comes to presentation. So presentation is really important, creating nice renderings like this one uh, that I'm going to be showing you in the first chapter of uh, this course. Uh, I think it's really important to understand how to do this and the result can be truly amazing. Now, as I said, families are kind of the building block when it comes to kitchens. And if you don't have good families and if you don't know how to modify families, your kitchens are not going to look as good as they could be. So uh, as part of this course, I have a whole chapter that's dedicated to family creation and modification when it comes to kitchen elements. So all of those little kitchen elements that you have, I show you how to either create these families or how to modify existing families to fit your needs. And uh, also as part of this course, I have, I'm including a whole kitchen Revit family pack. So this is a uh, basically a, a bunch of families that you can use for creating kitchens in Revit and they have been uh, modified uh, in such a way where they can really adapt to any situation and they make the workflow a lot faster uh, and efficient than if you were using either native Revit families or if you decided to download some families from online. So I just show you all of that. And also as part of the course, I include a couple of extra chapters so you can see what's the difference in workflow when it comes to creating kitchens using only the native uh, Revit families, the, the ones that come uh, with the Autodesk family library and also another one where I show you how to create a kitchen when you're only using in-place modeling, in-place components and just creating a custom design uh, kitchen. So I want to show you uh, pretty much everything. The kind of the main approach by Autodesk, the kind of wild design approach if you're using in-place modeling and then also my personal workflow and approach. Uh, the idea behind the, this is that you can then develop your own approach when it comes to uh, designing kitchens depending on what kind of design you're doing, uh, what are your needs and expectations, what are your clients needs and expectations and what's most comfortable for your level of knowledge. So that's what this course is all about now. I'm just going to be jumping into Revit real quick to show you off what that looks like in Revit and what you're going to be learning. But if you're interested in this course, uh, check it out. It's going to be the first link somewhere below the video that leads you to my website and there you can get the full course as well as all of my other Revit courses. Okay, so now let's jump into Revit. Okay, so here we are in Revit and this is that first project where I outline my whole personal workflow when it comes to kitchens in Revit and this is what we're going to be creating. So as you can see, it's really nice modern dark kitchen design uh, and here uh, I not only show you how to place all of the elements and what is my quickest approach when it comes to uh, placing elements and just designing the kitchen overall. It's not only about placing elements, but it's also about uh, what's the quickest way to get to the best solution for your space. Uh, so I show you all of that and then afterwards uh, I show you how to make it look nice, how to apply materials, how to add lighting, ambient lighting such as this one here and here in the front and then also direct lighting like the ones that we have coming from this hood as well as these here uh, kind of ceiling lights that are hanging up the ceiling. Uh, also of course you will see how to add all of the appliances like the built-in stove, uh, like the built-in dishwasher, the fridge, here the little wine uh, cooling uh, refrigerator and so on. Uh, now when it comes to assembling this kitchen, uh, if I just switch here to the floor plan, here is the kitchen as you can see. I show you pretty much the, the whole approach, how I add elements, how I modify some of the elements, which 
well, were necessary to be modified a little bit. And then also how to use elements, how to pick up the correct elements and how to place them accordingly in space. So for example, this one, this is the adjustable element. This is the one uh, that they use. So as you can see, uh, it has the adjustable size. And then in chapter two, I show you how to create uh, this uh, adjustable, uh, this adjustable uh, cabinet, which can then fit in space. So as you can see here, if I make sure that it fits on one side, I can just stretch it all the way to the other side so it fits in that space perfectly. Uh, let's go to the uh, 3D view. So it's one of these, let's see which one it is. Okay, so here's the kitchen uh, view. So when it comes to these cabinets, I also, uh, when it comes to showing how these families work, I show you how to modify them uh, because, for example, for kitchens in uh, these situations, these cabinets sometimes go, go all the way to the ground uh, or to the floor, and in some cases, people prefer to have uh, have them lifted up a little bit on some legs. So I show you how to add a parameter. So if here, if we go into Edit Type, you can see uh, we've created multiple parameters that have legs, and also I show you how to add this uh, on-off switch for legs. So here we can just switch this one from 500 uh, regular to uh, 500 legs. And as you can see here, now we have legs. Uh, now this one goes all the way to the back, but also we've created this new one, the 500 millimeter short, uh, which is uh, a lot shorter. That's the one that we used here on the other side. So that's that's where we had a need for that short cabinet. Uh, let's go back here to the, the one with legs. And then also we can get rid of legs by going just to 500 millimeter. So I show you how to modify all of these families, how to adjust them properly. And then also I show you how to adjust the, the families and the appliances, how to edit materials. Uh, so on and so forth so everything is fitting in perfectly I show you how to use and uh, how to create this really cool line based upper cabinet family so as you can see it can be just a couple of cabinets and then you can stretch it out as much as you want okay now it's going kind of into the hood so let's move over to one of the elevations interior elevations here so as you can see it's kind of going to the wrong place so we can just stretch it there there we go so i show you how to create these really useful families which can be adjusted to fit the size so as you can see doesn't really matter how large the space is you can always adjust these cabinets and their uh, positioning so we cover all of that on this project and of course in the second uh, in the second chapter where i show you how to uh, modify existing families or create new families if necessary and the final two chapters uh, will be showing you this project and then this project as well. Uh, so for this kitchen, this was done using only the uh, kitchen families that come with Revit, the kitchen casework, uh, the little counter, the, the top cabinets, and uh, pretty much everything that's, uh, that you can see here are just families that come with Revit uh, with the just a regular family uh, pack. So uh, this basically shows you how <laughs> Revit was intended to work. If you don't have any other families, uh, this is what was meant to be used. And then, of course, uh, you can use this approach or here I show you another approach. This is by using mostly in place uh, modeling. So in place components, as you can see, uh, pretty much everything is just one big thing. Uh, now uh, this is uh, probably my least favorite approach, but I thought it was important to share it with you uh, just so you can see uh, what works for you. I show you kind of different approaches when it comes to uh, kitchen uh, design or kitchen modeling in Revit, and then you can pick out what works best for you, what you like, what you don't like, uh, what you want to include in your own personal workflow, and what you want to avoid. So that, that's my approach. I teach you everything, and then you pick out what's, what works best for you and your needs. So that's that's the course. It's uh, over five hours long. Uh, it teaches you pretty much everything and you get that really useful family pack. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, quick little announcement. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.